Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Go Out and Sketch a Devil Fire Fish instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the devil fire fish by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson kit. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Make sure to click that like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out NatureSketchCrate.com to shop for future crates. Head out to sketch in an aquarium or from a live HD video feed at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a devil firefish for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. Relax, enjoy your time observing nature, and don't get too caught up with the details. So first you want to decide how big you want the fish on your page. You can go ahead and refer to your final reference image for sizing, if that helps. Or you can blow up different parts. So blow up, I mean, make something bigger so you can focus in on maybe the head or parts of the fins and instead of the entire fish. So first draw some shapes such as circles and ovals with a very light mark to get an idea of the size. So I'm just drawing oval, triangle, little half circle, another oval here, um, just getting an idea of the sizing. So maybe this is a little off. And I'm staying similar in size, since this is the same page size, as my reference image, my final reference image from the step-by-step. -step. So that helps out a little bit. So just trying to figure out the placement on the page before drawing in the details. If you're drawing from a live fish, you want to get these in quick. And it might be helpful to do a few practice sketches, just warm up sketches, drawing real quick like this to get a hang of where the fish is. Um, and I'm just adding some quick spines. I'm not counting how many because this is just a really quick sketch. So I just wanna make sure I get kind of an approximate, it's just a representation of this. So I have a space that I'm gonna work in for the sizing. So I'm not gonna make it bigger than this. And then I can start adding some slightly darker marks for details. I think for this, I could either start on the body or the eye for sizing. And I think I'll start with the eye. I think it looks like it's about there. And then I'm gonna add in some more defining parts of this head. I'm not gonna add a bunch of stripes unless they help me figure out the sizing. So this one kind of helps figure out the sizing for the head. And I can still adjust this too. I don't have to keep it this size, but I'm not going to erase any lines just because it's good to do this for speed. I'm not going to erase any lines because when you're out sketching, you should be able to do this quick. It is just a sketch. And if you spend a lot of time erasing, you'll end up without anything on your page. It's better to get a little something than nothing at all. Even if that animal's moving a lot and you just get this quick sketch here, you can use what you know about that animal from the final reference image and the anatomy image on the Hello, my devil firefish to help you figure out how to place those details in after you have this or you just 
right on the outside that you didn't have that much time. It's important to make any kind of observations and notes about what was going on or why your sketch looked a certain way that it did. So it doesn't have to be finished and it doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to just be a quick representation of that moving animal. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in this back part of the fish and some of these spines and I'll use these appendages, the sizing, to help me figure out where the other spines should go and where they should start. And you can count how many spines there are if you have the time. Maybe your fish isn't moving around a lot. Uh, maybe you're doing this from a photo instead of a video. Maybe you've paused this video and you're sketching along. So I'm not going to count how many of those spines there are. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in really quickly, assuming I don't have time to count all the spines. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the soft fins as well, the soft dorsal fin, the caudal fin, the anal fin. I'm just going to draw this outside shape because this is a quick sketch. If you wanted to focus in on the exact number, you can focus in on that instead. But this is just a quick sketch, quick study representation of this fish. And so when I'm adding these spines in, I'm just trying to focus on the spacing in between them more than the number. So I'm just kind of adding them in, in a line, to help me figure out spacing. So there might be too many, there might not be enough, but it's gonna give me this right general idea of this fish. And that's really what we're looking for here today. Just getting an idea of this fish, not an exact representation. So don't worry too much if anything is not exact if you don't have the right number. So I'm adding this stripe in right here because it helps me figure out where these other fins go. So I'm doing the pectoral fin and this stripe kind of leads right into this one here. And then I can see real quickly because they're big that there's four little spines coming out. One, two, three, four, and that placement is not great. That's okay. That's just a sketch. And I can now quickly, without this animal being here, fill in the rest of the shape because I know that each one of these has a little hook going back in and a hook back in. So I don't have to draw this in right away. And then I'm going to draw the rest in in a similar fashion. And when you're drawing, you just try to figure out where things are in relation to other parts once you get the sizing figured out. So this related to this, and you just kind of work one piece at a time. And you may not get it right. There's plenty of times where I have to change it. It's not exactly right. And that's okay. That's what sketching is all about. You just get it on the page and relax and observe the animal. 
Maybe draw it a few times. Maybe, so I feel like this shape is a little bit too rounded. It should be a little bit more like this, so I can just change it by adding a darker line. If this confuses me at all, I can erase it. Maybe I will. It still looks a little bit big. So if something looks really obvious that it's not the right size, you can change it by just adding some slightly darker marks. And again, if it becomes confusing, feel free to erase it. But I recommend not erasing unless it's confusing you. So next we're going to add these fins down here and just going to quickly think about the outside shape of it. Just get it in there real quick. Sometimes I can see the fin behind it, but I'm just going to focus on the fin in front. And I can see a little bit of the fish's body down here. And then I'm focusing on the shape of this fin. Again, not the number of spines. Just to quickly get it in. And I'm referring to spines, I'm thinking these rays that are coming out. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this caudal fin. Just getting the basic shape in rather than worrying about the number of rays coming out. So this is confusing me a bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and erase it. I'm not going to worry about those eraser marks. It just makes this a little more fun. I have lots of little marks in here I'm just going to leave behind. They'll kind of just sit in the background creating that sketchy look because this is a sketch. And so I'm just going to kind of add these in the same way I did before, thinking about placement as far as distance between each one rather than the number because this is a quick sketch, a quick representation of this animal. And then I'll start adding in some of the this is starting to confuse me a bit here. There we go. And now I'll go ahead and add in some of these stripes. And again, some of these stripes look like they have a very purposeful place meant to them. Um, but I'm just going to quickly add them in. Not worrying too much about that placement. Maybe just think about this sizing or the space in between. You can add the lateral line in if that helps you um, with placement as well. It's an important part of the fish. Some little spots on the lateral line here. So you can add that in as well. And there's some big stripes, so maybe I'll just focus on those real quick. In a very simplistic fashion. Right into here. But I just don't want to deal with it too much. I want to keep this very simple. Some of the stripes change a little bit up here. This gets a little confusing. Might have to erase that part right there. And then this right here, okay. That's okay. Like I said before, sometimes the stripes can become a little confusing, so feel free to erase them. Adding these in really 
quickly. The perculum is pretty important here too. So I'm gonna add that in real fast. Again, sizing is not exact. getting a quick sketch of this animal and I'm trying to get too exact so just getting some stripes in just to represent the idea of it and then last thing to add some stripes in here now if this fish swam away at this point I would still be able to finish this based on what I know about it based on my previous sketch from the step-by-step -step. But since it's a demonstration, it's still here in front of me on the video. And even with these, I'm not being real exact, just quickly getting them in there. Getting a quick representation to this whole process. Lastly, I'm going to add some spots to both the dorsal and the pectoral fin. Um, and I'm just going to add these real quick. Again, just in the same general spot that they are. Not the exact spacing. Again, I'm trying to help show you what you would do quick if sketching if this animal was there in the same basic space the whole time. I'm not counting how many, I'm just adding them in, same general area. spots on these fins. Looks a little small for some reason now, but I think it's right. And I think about where to put them based on where the spots are that I already put on. So this one, the spot would be a little bit lower and in between these two spots. But again, placement can be more generalized, does not have to be exact. It's more so that there are dark spots and white in between making a stripe.
again, adding in the same general space, not being exact. Getting an idea of this again. And I need to correct some things. You can just add some darker lines in. But I think that all looks close enough. And so I will go ahead and put in the common name, the scientific name. Make sure to add any kind of observations you're making in the white space. Like maybe you didn't have a chance to count the number of spiny fins, so you can kind of write that and draw an arrow, or maybe these pectoral fin uh, rays, you want to write that in or say, hey, this couldn't quite count it, but the um, red lionfish and the common lionfish or devil firefish has a different number of anal fin rays most of the time and soft fin rays, but those are all kind of things you can add in here. You can draw it right in the anatomy. So write down different things or anything you observed about the fish or its anatomy or its behavior, uh, what the weather was like, how you were feeling, whatever you like. This is your journal and your sketch. So next I'm gonna add some paint. So I have my paints that I saved from my step-by-step -step, and I'll revive them by just adding a little bit of water as I go through this process. I'm trying to do it similar to the step-by-step -step process. So in the similar order or the same order and using the same colors. So first I'm gonna add the orange color and this will differentiate the stripes a bit. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this pigment and move it over to the side of my palette. So this is a drier in my palette, this is a little wetter in my palette, so it's more water added to it. And so it's gonna look lighter when I paint with it versus this drier color that's gonna be darker if I paint with it right now. And I'm just gonna dab that off of my towel and test it out, make sure it's the right color. Looks a little bit too pigmented, so or too dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water to it and test it out again. <laughs> and now it looks like it doesn't have enough pigment, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bits. So I picked up just a little. That looks better to me. I'm gonna pick some up, dab it on my towel, so I don't put too much water on my paper. And I'm just gonna add it to these stripes. So I put in a lot of quick stripes and I'm just going to fill those in and hope that I got them right and I'm not going to worry too much about being exact I'm just going to kind of go every other one and if I need to make some adjustments I can make that area bigger smaller or whatever I need to do. So I just put a little bit more paint to the side to make that a little bigger because it wasn't really every other. And there are some key spots like this stripe behind this fish's head that I do want to make sure stay the right color. I'm going to put the, a thin stripe there, and I kind of want a thin stripe there too, so I'll put that in right now. So that first initial drawing was just a nice base to work off of, and if there's anything I miss that I'd like to add in now, I can continue to do that with my paint. And nothing has to be exactly the way it is. It's just a base to work with. And with painting in these stripes first, it's going to make it less confusing as we go. It's also going to help for um, layering and transparency 
and bring this picture together with just a few layers of paint. And I like to work top to bottom and left to right so I don't smudge. So before I do this bottom area, I'm going to work on these upper dorsal spiny fin spots. I'm just going to go ahead and add in the color where I see it. And again, I was not exact at all, so I'm not going to be exact about it with my paints either. I'm just going to add it in. And hopefully you do the same, just a real rough representation. No need for perfection here. Just getting a quick study of this animal in. And that's it. If there's anything that you saw that was glaringly different, just go ahead and note that Write it in on the side. Don't feel like you have to paint everything in. And like I said, I'm not being exact. I'm just getting these colors in in the same approximate area, same general spaces that I'm seeing and observing in this fish because I'm just getting it quickly in and I've already painted this fish before with our step-by-step -step, so I'm familiar with it. It makes it a little bit easier. I know a little bit about the anatomy which also helps as well. Of that color added you can start in the dry spots and you can check that it is dry by just dabbing your finger over it and since we're not adding a lot of water onto the paper itself this should all dry really fast so you should be able to work quickly through this so I'm going to take this next color which is the double maroon for our step-by-step -step. add a little bit of water to it and I'm just gonna test it out on my paper, make sure it's deep enough, maybe not. And I can remix these colors because I have my paints with me as well if I need at any moment. And that looks good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding it. And this is all dry now already. So start adding it, I'm gonna add it to these stripes. And I'm going to prefer to my fish in front of me, but if you need to just follow the step by step because your fish is gone, because you're doing this in person, then you can do that instead. So just adding this in. I don't want to be too exact, so I'm not referring to the fish too much because I wasn't exact about the placement of these stripes anyway. So I'm kind of looking at it and thinking, okay, this one's a lot darker. This one has this little bit through here in this area of the fish. This is darker and here and this part of the fish will pick up more paint whenever you need it, of course. And then it has a strip at the very front. It's a lot darker. Just gonna add that in and as you can see, not being exact at all, just real approximation of these colors. And as the color runs out on my brush, I can go get these kind of light, slightly lighter areas. Pick up more paint whenever you need it and dab it off on your towel. And just getting this quick representation of this fish here. If you need a finer tip, just take your brush and just roll it on your towel. 
create that slightly finer tip. And I'm just going to quickly add this to the orange spots here. When you think you've added all of that color, again, it should be dry, so you can move on to adding the next. Next, I'm going to add this double brown. I'm going to add it wherever I see it, so that looks like the needs a little bit more. Maybe even use this most of the pigment. Sometimes when you revive it, it's not quite as vibrant, so. Now that it's dried and revived, it's not as vibrant, but it looks like it'll be good enough. So I'm going to just go ahead and add that wherever I see it in the fish itself. And you can also use my step-by-step -step to help me with that kind of placement. But first of all, I see it really predominant in the uh, pectoral fin. I'm just going to go ahead and add that in there, even though it's on the bottom. So I'll just have to be really careful not to smudge it. But I feel as if that'll help me see the image a little better. There's a little bit of shadow there. You can use it for shadowing. Starting to get a little bit of depth to this picture. Still pretty ugly though, in a weird ugly stage. It's just all kind of a mess. Not being exact at all, just putting it in real quick, just giving it a little bit more depth. I think there's just a little bit, some of the stripes as well. Not a lot, so I'm just kind of adding it in general spaces. And I'll probably use that to fill in the eye a little bit. So I'm going to start on the outside of the eye and work in towards, so take the color towards the center, leaving that center spot. If you prefer to do that with a marker, you can the pigment microns at the end. And next I'm going to add some of the orange color again just kind of brighten this up as it's kind of gotten dulled so I'm going to just kind of quickly go through and just add a little bit more uh, sparingly throughout the whole thing and I'm looking at my fish reference for placement of where it looks like it's a little brighter to represent that since I'm not being exact at just representing this fish the way it looks so if I see a lot of orange in one area I'm gonna just add a little bit more to that and those are the brighter areas and maybe just a 
a little bit more on these upper spines here, spiny rays. Again, I'm not adding a lot of water to the paper itself. And I just dab this to make sure it's dry. And that's happening because I'm not adding a lot of water. And then again, just like with the light orange, I'm just going to add this to general areas that look a little redder. And this will just make it pop a little bit more off the page. Not adding it to everything, just general spaces. A little bit of red in there. And then Lastly, I'm going to add this brown color, the double deep brown, maybe a little bit more of that pigment. Test it out. Looks pretty good. To pick up some more and dab it off. Make sure this is dry again. And I'm just going to add this where I see it. It's kind of a shadow on some of these dorsal spines. Up more paint whenever you need it. If you're not sure about the color, just test it out again. Again, I'm being really rough about the placement of this color. And I'm referring to my fish reference again. And you can use this as a shadow color if needed. Not being exact at all, I'm going to rely on my pens to bring everything together at the end. Some of these are need a little bit darker, so I'm just going to take some of this color for speed and simplicity and just add it over the ones that need a little bit of deepening. You can go back and add the maroon if you want. It might end up being a little more vibrant that way. good for a sketch. So it still looks kind of crazy and messy so I'll pull it all together with the ink lines. So last I'm going to add ink lines. Just pull this all together. I'm going to start with the smallest micron, the 005 micron, just to redefine those lines because it's easy for me to get kind of lost with what lines go where. I'm going to be redrawing some of these rays here in the fins and drawing in spots and such. So I want to keep it small because I can kind of change it a little bit with those bigger lines and it's a lot less obvious than the big lines. So if I do something I don't like, I can change it. And so I'm just going to go throughout and redraw these lines. I don't think I'm going to draw in these spots because they're not as prominent as the other parts of the fish. So I'm going to draw in, redraw these stripes and the eye and these appendages and such, but not these spots here and here. 
And again, I'm going to go ahead and draw in each of these little rays here now. And you can use your initial lines as a guide. They don't have to be an absolute, so depending on where your paint landed, you can use that. Or if your fish is still in front of you and you see something different about the shape, you can change that now too. And again, I'm not being exact about what this looks like. I am just adding them in in an approximate fashion using those lines as a guide. Trying to keep it similar spacing. I'm occasionally referring to my fish a little bit but just kind of making it up a little. And if I make a mistake it's no big deal. I can even just turn those into some spots. And this fish, all of the spots are right on all of these rays, so I might try to do that as well. I've seen uh, pictures of the firefish um, and videos where the spots are actually in between each of the rays as well, so could go either way. Go ahead and go throughout and redefine and redraw those lines and draw in those rays and spots if you want, or you can save the spots for a slightly larger micron. And when I'm referring to spots, I mean the spots on the caudal fin and the anal fin and the soft dorsal fin. doesn't need to be exact. So some might be a little fatter, might be a little thinner, and that's okay. Might be a little more curved than they should be. I'm gonna even change this to, I don't like how curved that is. Probably should have drawn it in earlier. Just change it right there. That's totally fine. I'm just drawing a slightly thicker line to change that. It's just a sketch. It's going to be imperfectly perfect. Something you could also do to this area is add a little bit more paint if you want to kind of hide that mistake. But I like leaving my mistakes. They happen and that's what sketching is all about is having room for mistakes. Being free and not worrying too much about making those is really liberating and it can help you grow a lot as an artist. Adding some of those little rough parts, little details I didn't notice before, didn't add in before. And find fish moves a lot, and when it moves, your perspective changes, and what you think should be included changes. And if you see a little differently now, that's good. And you might want to add some things that make it a little different. And I'm going to leave my pencil marks underneath. Next, I'm going to add some slightly thicker lines with the OM micron. I'm just going to add these sparingly throughout. 
wherever I see. So definitely these spots. And just quickly, because this is just a sketch. Make these spots a little bit bigger. Refer to my fish, maybe I need to make them a little bit, add a few more. Combine some of them. Things that are more, parts of the fish that are more forward, closer to you and your view are going to be able to be represented as standing out more by adding some thicker lines, not over everything, of course, but sparingly throughout. By adding some line variation throughout your image, it'll make it pop off the page a bit more. So this forward-facing appendage, I'm gonna pop that out a little more, make sure it adds fill in the eye. It's percula, some separation here. Deeply shadowed areas might need it. I think it's time to go ahead and move on to the last micron. This one's really fun. You want to use it very sparingly to help everything pop out a lot. And it does tend to smudge a little bit, so be careful about that too before it dries. Which I was really messy with the first time, but not so neat but this time. Kind of a quick, messier mood today. like how this looks. I will go ahead and demonstrate how you can add more paint here if you want to make it look more seamless. Although it looks good. I like owning up my mistakes. I like seeing them. You can just kind of pull some of that paint again through some of those spines. And if you do it over a lot of them, it'll look consistent. And it's not going to stand out as much, but you want to add that paint to all the stripes so that those aren't darker than the other ones. And you can add more paint and more ink to your painting. Just want to make sure it dries in between. So if there are some areas that are glaring that you want to change, you can add a little bit more. But it is just a sketch again, so don't get too carried away. Don't spend too much time on it. I'm gonna do that with a more detailed drawing or painting. But this is just a sketch. Just a quick representation of the sample. And I can't help, since I have the paint, this looks like it should be a little darker. So now I'm done. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. And don't forget to add some observations, notes about your mood, or anything else you want to add in this white space. This is like your journal and you should treat it as such. Don't forget to share this on the Facebook fan art page and use the hashtag NatureCrateArt to have it featured on our social media. Also click the like button Subscribe to this YouTube channel and shop for future lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com. Thank you for joining me. Great job observing your world and keep practicing.